25th is World Environment Day. It is also when India will have a new government or a new old government. Whatever the results, we believe this is a time to recommit to an agenda which is inclusive and affordable and so sustainable. I am Sunita Narayan and I work at the Center for Science and Environment. I will share with you my understanding, my perspectives on issues that matter in this show. I hope you will find it of interest. I hope what I say will make some sense. This time, I want to discuss the agenda for the new old government. And I talk about it as an agenda, which is an old agenda, but with a new imagination. As I speak to you, my city of Delhi has touched 50 degrees centigrade in terms of its temperature. It is scorching, burning heat. And now we are being informed of a looming water crisis. All this, please remember, is worse for people who work outside, laborers, farmers. They have no choice but to cope with the heat and to do this with very little resources. And remember always that these are people who have not contributed to the stock of greenhouse gases, which is today leading to climate change, which is forcing temperatures to rise. But even as I talk to you about the heat, there is a cyclone which has happened in the eastern region of my country, which has also devastated large parts and brought in landslides and floods. So what you are seeing today is the impacts of extreme weather. And this has huge implications for development as we know it. And in this age of climate change, we must also remember that the priority action areas in some senses remain the same. We know that the last government had schemes in place and budgets allocated for all these issues. But we also know that ensuring well-being and welfare of people is a work in progress. During these two months of election, journalists have fanned across different regions of India to listen to the voices of people. Strangely enough, this is the one time that the voices of ordinary people actually get listened to, actually matter. And when you listen to these voices, you understand that what is top on the agenda still is the issue of unemployment. The energy crisis is still wicked. Clean water is still not available in large parts of the country, which really means that what we thought was an agenda which was complete is still unfinished. The fact is India is a vast country with a massive deficit in governance. The last mile for any government scheme is about making sure it reaches people, but not once, every time. And this is now combined with the impact of changing climate, where every day some part of the country or the other is being battered by at least one extreme weather event. In my view, in this age of climate change, we need a completely new narrative. The government needs to rework and re-engineer development so that it is inclusive, affordable, and so sustainable. This will need change in design, but then also in delivery. So this is our common agenda. Let me unpack some of this for you. Take the issue of clean water. Our cities are today reeling between having too much water because there are floods and then too little water. Take the case of Bengaluru, take the case of Delhi, take the case of Mumbai today. All of them are talking about rationing water today. But within a month's time when the monsoon hits, they will be talking about being in flood. 
We now need a different paradigm of water management, which will require first the focus on harvesting water where it falls. Harvest every drop of rain so that we can recharge our groundwater. But then most importantly, we need to rethink the way we supply water. Today, we bring water longer and longer distances. A lot of it is lost in the delivery, uh, the distribution losses, and so the cost of water goes up. We need to reverse this so that we actually supply the bulk of the water from local water systems, from the groundwater that we have recharged and we have stored at the time when we had excess rain. This then needs to be connected to the system of sewage management that we have in our cities so that we do not end up with polluting our rivers. We need to make sure that every drop of that sewage is treated and recycled so that we have water to water. So it requires a new imagination. It requires a new paradigm of both water and wastewater management so that it is inclusive, affordable and so sustainable. Take the other agenda of clean air. Most of us who live in cities today are gasping for our right to clean air. Let's also be clear that governments have done a lot over the last decade to be able to reduce pollution in our cities. But yet every winter when the cold air settles and there is no wind, we cannot breathe. This means that we need an agenda for clean air, which is much more transformational. And that means that we need clean energy. We need to move out of coal. But most importantly, it needs a complete change in the way we design mobility. Today, we move cars, not people. We have an opportunity to redesign this so that it is convenient enough, modern enough for us to be able to take a bus, a metro, cycle or walk. This has to be the agenda for clean air. Then there is the issue of clean energy, something that, that we need in our part of the world, particularly the women who have to use dirty fuel still to cook food, which comes at the cost of their health. The government's LPG program is something that we need to understand was very good. And the Ujwala program of the government to supply subsidized LPG cylinders worked. But the problem is, and this is the wicked problem of our world, that the need for clean energy is something which is never prioritized in a household's um, expenditure. So the women cannot afford the cost of the refill of the cylinder, which means that they are still using dirty energy to cook the fuel. So we need to talk about how can you do last mile connectivity when it comes to energy systems, whether it is through mini grids, which are driven through solar or wind or biomass, or whether it is through subsidy so that this clean energy can be put in the hands of the poor. That is critical. Then we need investment in nutritious food that does not come at the cost of land or water degradation, does not add to the toxins in our soil, in our bodies, but most importantly, an agricultural system that will put money in the hands of farmers. This is an agenda of investment in local water systems to local industry, which is built on natural resources. What is important to note is that this is not a new agenda. Government has schemes and budgets for most of what I have talked about. What I believe we need today is to learn from what is not working and we need transformational action. And for this, 
With the redesign, we need to focus on ensuring implementation. But all this is not possible without two critical, critical next generation reforms. One, we need to strengthen our institutions. We need participatory democracy to make development programs work, to empower Panchayati Raj institutions, to empower municipal bodies. But a lot of this is an unfinished agenda. We have not done enough to deepen these institutions so that they can take control of, over finances, they can take control over natural uh, resources, and they can really be partners in the development that we are talking about. The second agenda is that governance will need increased feedback and accountability. This needs tolerance for voices that may differ. It is important to understand that alternate information, a different point of view, is not dissent or targeted criticism of government. Currently, most such voices have been silenced, perhaps not deliberately, but through the unsaid that makes it more acceptable to be acceptable if you have something to say that the powers want to hear. In some senses, it is an echo chamber where only cheerleaders can thrive. And we know that development is a laboratory. We do not have a fixed formula. We have to keep innovating, keep learning, and keep moving ahead. This is why this information is so critical. And so the final point would be that rebuilding of trust is key, not just for schemes, but for societies to thrive. This has to be the agenda moving forward. On this World Environment Day, and at a time when India has a new government, even if it is the old government as the new government, it is a time for change. For societies to build green, because it is inclusive, to build growth, because it is sustainable. Thank you.